My name is Tom McGrail. I'm the Director of Clinical Services for King Systems. Uh, we'd like to chat today a little bit about the King Airway, sometimes called the King Tube. The indication for the King Airway is for airway management to provide a patent airway to allow patient ventilation. Uh, obvious contraindications are uh, an intact gag reflex, obviously you can't put it in if they're still gagging, um, or uh, if they've ingested a caustic substance or if there's known esophageal disease. It's available in, in two iterations. Uh, the original version was just a single lumen. It's actually the King LTD, uh, laryngeal tube disposable. has two cuffs and ventilatory openings in between. Uh, the other version, probably the more popular version now, is the King LTSD. And the, the S actually stands for suction or section, secondary lumen. So it has an extra lumen to allow uh, accessing the stomach. And again, this is on the back side allowing a, up to an 18 French gastric tube to be uh, placed into the stomach, uh, uh, capturing on the fact that the tip is already in the esophagus. The original version is available in five sizes. They're sized by height, go from about a 12 kilogram infant up to a, uh, the largest adult. The uh, LTSD is available in three sizes uh, for adults. Uh, we'll talk about this later. Uh, there is a lot of overlap between the sizes. Um, Again, how this works is the, uh, there, there's two cuffs with ventilatory openings in between. Not unlike the combi tube that has been around for years. But you'll see that the, the curvature is a bit different. The combi tube has two inflation uh, ports for the two separate cuffs. Uh, there's only one on this. There's two ventilation ports here, only one on this. So how this works is uh, you're just inserting it blindly. It's a superglottic device and, and you're you're wanting to put the tip into the esophagus. And in this case, it's going around the, uh, the, the bend and the, the uh, distal balloon is sealing in the esophagus and the proximal balloon is sealing above the airway in the oropharynx. And when you inflate both cuffs, it seals off those respective areas and you see the airway openings are here ventilating the, uh, uh, the, the airway. So that's how it works. Both the King LTSD and the King LTD are available in a kit, which includes the, the airway itself, uh, a syringe, 60 cc for the adult sizes, 35 for the peds, uh, uh, some lubricant, and a quick reference card that includes brief instructions and, and sizing information as well. There are essentially three key aspects in the use of the King Airway. The first is uh, the actual insertion into the mouth and getting it around the corner of the, or around the base of the tongue uh, and getting it towards the, the esophagus. Uh, do a chin lift and control the tongue. Uh, introduce the, the, the tip at roughly a 45 degree angle. And with, with one free, uh, free and easy motion and without exerting uh, undue pressure, advance the tip behind the base of the tongue, rotate it back to the midline and advance the connector to the teeth. At this point, inflate both cuffs with a full syringe, 60 cc's, uh, 60 to 70 for adults, uh, 30 to 35 for the, the pediatric sizes. Uh, connect the recess bag or breathing circuit if in the OR and assess ventilation. And if you do not get an airway, retract slightly until uh, breathing is free and easy flowing. Uh, if there is uh, a slight leak at this point, uh, you may need to actually add a little bit more for the, those uh, larger patients. And at this point, it would also be good to uh, uh, use tape or other accepted fixation uh, to make sure that the tube is stabilized before moving the patient. And then for the version with a gastric access port, clearly if uh, you uh, would like to or it's indicated to uh, pass a, a gastric tube and decompress the stomach, now is the time to do that as well. There's several other things you can do in addition to the chin lift. Um, clearly, if you're using this as a backup to intubation, it's, it's uh, very easy to insert if you can use a laryngoscope. Again, you're controlling the tongue. And again, one smooth motion, uh, inserting it uh, in, in place. To, to illustrate this uh, alignment of ventilatory openings, I've got this model with a, with a cutaway. And uh, so you can see that as this is inserted in, and you, you end up going too deep. And with the balloons inflated, you can see that this balloon is actually occluding 
the airway opening. But as you withdraw this, then the openings are uh, exposed and you can now ventilate. So this is exactly what's happening uh, when you do it in a patient. This alignment procedure accomplishes a couple of other important things. Um, I mentioned there's three, three sizes, uh, three adult sizes, but the tube shaft is the same diameter, the cuffs are approximately the same. So the only difference is length. Obviously a taller patient is going to have a greater distance from their teeth to the laryngeal opening. So this alignment procedure where you go in too deep, it, it essentially accommodates a taller patient or someone with a deeper uh, larynx than you might have been anticipated. And obviously if you have to retract it more, uh, that would accommodate a shorter patient than what you expected. And if you have to pull it all the way out uh, before you, you start to get some airflow, then something's got to be wrong. That would be an indication of the highly unlikelihood that the, the tip had actually entered the trachea. If the King Airway is going to be left in place for an extended period of time, more than a couple hours, it just makes common sense to make sure that the, the cuffs are not overinflated. Uh, we recommend using uh, 60 centimeters of water uh, pressure for the cuffs. Uh, this is a, a nice balance between getting a good ventilatory seal and not creating long-term uh, sequela. Uh, if you do not have a, a pressure gauge, then, then clearly what you need to do is, as you're ventilating the patient, listen for leakage and, and gradually decrease the, the cuff volume until you just get a leak and then give just a little bit more to seal it off. So use a just seal condition. I would like to touch on several frequently asked questions re in regards to the King Airway. First of all, first of all we uh, often get, well, does this prevent against aspiration? Well, I refer to this, uh, uh, this cross-sectional model again and the function of the uh, oral pharyngeal cuffs with, and the esophageal cuff and sealing above and below the uh, airway inlet. Uh, as we saw, that it's a, it gives a good ventilatory seal. Uh, there, there is um, a, a low likelihood of insufflation of, of gases into the stomach. And so clearly, there is some protection against rising stomach contents, but no device actually uh, prevents against aspiration, not even a tracheal tube. The next question I wanted to touch on is how long can the King Airway be, be left in place? And it relates to the, the comment earlier about making sure the cuffs are not overinflated. Uh, it's been used in the operating room for up to eight hours. Uh, it's been used to transport military personnel out of Iraq and Afghanistan overnight. It's been used in the ICU for two to three days. The key is just to make sure the cuffs are not overinflated. The final frequently asked question is probably the most complicated, but also the one we get the most often, and that has to do with how do you exchange the King Airway for a tracheal tube? And, and clearly, everyone is anxious to see that uh, a bougie inserted through the uh, King Airway uh, is deflected anteriorly out towards the laryngeal inlet, and this could be a, a, a suitable way to exchange. However, uh, I would caution that if this is done blindly, it's probably not the best technique. Uh, first of all, you need to remember that uh, if you're able to ventilate and you, you're able to decompress the stomach with that gastric access lumen, hopefully you've got time and you can figure out what your options are. So this uh, is, is certainly not something that has to be jumped into right away. Uh, we certainly hear of folks that leave the King Airway in to do diagnostic procedures or send them up to the operating room even. Uh, the next step, or the, the first uh, way to, to see is can you, by deflating the cuff a little bit, actually visualize the cords uh, next to the, to the King Airway. And it might be that you could just put a bougie in. And in fact, I can actually see it here. So visualizing is certainly going to be better than doing something blindly. If you've got access to a video laryngoscope, this can actually uh, help as well. Again, visualizing that you've actually placed something in the, in the trachea. First, see what you can see by leaving the tube in place and you know, trying to either put a bougie or tracheal tube outside the tube. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can continue to ventilate or at least oxygenate through the King Airway itself. Uh, next, uh, certainly if you want to go through the tube, you can't see anything because the cuff's in the way or there's secretions or whatever. Uh, then there's two other suggestions. Uh, one would be an Aintree tube exchange catheter that has a hollow bore 
that you can put a pediatric fibro-optic bronchoscope through and visualize uh, its placement in the trachea. There's also an ARNT uh, tube exchange system that actually has a wire going through a, a fibro-optic bronchoscope and then an introducer that goes over top of that, again, visualizing that you're placing something in the trachea. As a last resort, uh, this certainly can be done blindly, and it's following a similar procedure that uh, we did for the original alignment of the, of the ventilatory openings. And that is start out too deep and, and just tap a little bit softly, and, 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 and at some point it'll go, and hopefully you'll feel the tracheal rings as well. And at this point, Assuming you'd be in the, in the trachea, you can deflate the cuffs and it becomes a normal exchange at this point. 